To those who are troubled about the growing number of Christian denominations, you can pretty safely point your finger at Martin Luther. But I would suggest he had a good reason for doing what he did, even though starting a new belief system wasn't his original intention. Allow me to explain. Martin was born into a moderately successful middle-class family, and his father Hans pressed him to become an attorney so that he would be successful in adulthood and able to take care of his parents in old age. Martin, however, did not enjoy his time in school, and he reminisces that the main motivator for studying was avoiding beatings. But eventually, he finished his undergrad degree in 1505 and immediately enrolled in law school after that. However, as he was traveling back from visiting his parents in Stoddernheim, he was caught in a violent thunderstorm. Seeing this as a sign from God, he cried out to St. Anne, promising to become a monk if he survived the storm. Still, there was a problem. Luther was trying to earn his own salvation through his works. He was considered one of the most devout monks, yet still he felt something was missing. It wasn't until the words of Romans 1.17 struck him, The just shall live by faith that he came to the realization that salvation cannot be earned, but is given by God through faith in Jesus. Not only was this his personal story of salvation, but it would become the reason he wrote the two most important documents of his life. The first you probably heard about, the 95 Theses. Teachers such as John Tetzel were teaching that souls stuck in purgatory, the temporary holding place until a person's sins are atoned, could be freed by a still living human if they placed an extra indulgence, or money, to the church. The money raised through indulgences was being used to build St. Peter's Cathedral. This angered Luther for many reasons, which you can read about in my video on the 95 Theses. To sum them up briefly, the Pope was rich enough that he could have built the cathedral without the help of the people, and the only authority the Pope has to forgive sins is simply recognizing that God has already forgiven those sins for repentant believers. The writing and nailing of the 95 Theses to the door of the Wittenberg Castle Church wasn't meant to spark a revolution, but to start a conversation. This act, however, was taken as an act of revolution, and Luther was summoned to be forced to recant, once in Augsburg in 1518, and again in Worms 1521. Both times he refused to recant, insisting that these doctrines in the 95 are beliefs that the Catholic Church should or already did believe. Although already excommunicated by the church, Emperor Charles V added an edict that the writings of Luther should be burned. Luther went into hiding, but God did not stop using him. At the time, there were very few German translations of the Bible, and the ones that existed were retranslations from the Latin Vulgate and written in language very difficult for everyday Germans to understand. This compelled Luther to make his own German translation of the New Testament, using words the everyday German Christian would understand and sold them in the 1522 Frankfurt Book Fair. Again, the results of this simple action stretched much farther than Luther could have realized. This German Bible would embolden William Tyndale to make an English translation. He would standardize the modern German language. He would inspire the practice of translating the Bible for mission work and lead to the salvation of millions during the Protestant Reformation. As for the rest of Luther's life, the man never stopped fighting. Sometimes he was right, sometimes he was wrong, sometimes he was fighting for the sake of fighting. But his core belief that the everyday Christian should be capable and encouraged to seek a personal relationship with God remains to this day the cornerstone of Christian beliefs, including modern Catholicism. As Paul wrote in 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4, This is good and pleasing to God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth.